Hello, Stellar Explorers. I'm delighted to be with you today to introduce some useful features of STK that will help you in your upcoming challenges. I'm going to use a scenario that is one of the example scenarios provided for you called I want my NBC. And I have adapted it, reducing the scenario analysis period to just a few hours and also change some of the names to make things more convenient. So in this particular challenge, you are to design the orbit of a satellite, which we are going to call Peacock Sat 1, that will provide live access between NBC Studios at 30 Rockefeller Center in New York and the Tom Brokaw, Stu Brokaw Studios in California. And I've also already come up with an orbit. And if we look at the satellite uh, axes, you can see that I have calculated separate access intervals between the satellite and California and the satellite and New York. We look at the timeline as we animate the scenario. You'll see that Peacock Sat 1 first has a single access to California, and then for a short time is able to access both studios simultaneously, and then loses California, and shortly afterwards loses access with New York. And you can see that in the timeline. Now in the challenge for this example scenario, we're interested in the overlap time in the access interval between California and New York, because that's when we can have live broadcasts being relayed between the two. So in order to calculate that, you could calculate and create reports for the separate access, Peacock Sat 1 to New York, Peacock Sat 1 to California, and then see where the overlap regions are. You could do that uh, with Microsoft Excel, for instance. But fortunately, STK allows us to do this automatically using the chain object. So I'm going to show you how that works. And then a little later, we'll also talk about another STK object called the constellation, which is also incredibly useful when you are coming up with communication systems. But first, the chain. So if we go to insert new, we are going to define a chain object. Here it is. We'll define its properties. And we'll hit insert, and a menu should come up. And the chain object is fairly simple. We can just add objects to it. But we have to make sure that we do so in correct order. So we're interested in transferring signals from the East Coast to the West Coast. So we're going to start out with New York 30 Rock. The next object in our chain is our relay satellite, the only one that we can change in this challenge. So if I click the right arrow, arrow it comes out over here. And then finally, our destination object is the uh, California Studios Tom Brokaw. I should mention, by the way, that if we are using sensors to receive and then transmit data, you can't just include the name of the satellite. You have to include the sensor, first the receiver, and then the transmitter if the satellite is acting as a relay. And they will be available to you in this list of available objects. But for now, we're just going to use line of sight access between these places and Peacock Sat 1. So if I hit OK, we have defined our chain object, but it's always good to rename things. And I strongly recommend that since chain objects are slightly different from other regular objects, that you include the word chain in the title, even though you can see the graphics object is different. So here I'm going to call this East West chain one, because our communication chain is going from the East Coast to the West Coast. And once again, the order is important. All right, so we can close out of the new objects. You can see nothing has happened yet because we have defined the chain, but we haven't calculated the axis. axis. So if we go to East West chain one and right click on it, you'll see there's no access menu right here, but we can go to chain and move over to the right, you can compute axes or compute axes in parallel. The computing in parallel is just if you have a very complicated communication chain and you also have a multi CPU computer. But for most purposes, compute axes is just fine. All right, so we've computed the axes. And again, we don't see anything happening. Nothing has been added to the timeline, as happens when you calculate an access between regular objects. So it turns out that we have to do that ourselves. So we're going to right click on the blank area in the timeline. 
click add time components. We're going to select our chain and then the intervals that we want to add are contained under complete chain access intervals, which is some way down the list. The trick that I use is that I look for the first object that has a plus sign next to it and I just click on that and we'll click OK. And there they are, the complete chain access intervals. If we look at the timeline, we'll see that this makes perfect sense, that the communications chain is active only when our satellite, Peacock Set 1, is able to simultaneously see New York and California. Let's see what that looks like when we animate our scenario. So first of all, we're accessing California. And now the chain is active. And you can see that uh, the active chain has changed the color. And then we're back to a single access. The chain is broken. And around we go. So the chain object does exactly what we want. If we want to produce a written report or get a numerical value for these, uh, the total access over this very short interval, you can see you can do so by hovering over the timeline, but it's more useful generally to get a written report. So in order to do that, we have to go back to our chain object. I'm going to right click on it. This time I'm going to go to the report and graph manager. And then we have to look at the correct style of report that we want. And what we want to report on is a written report of complete chain access. So we click on that, click generate. And there we go. We can see that just as it shows in the timeline, there are three separate access intervals. They're all fairly similar in terms of their duration. But for the purpose of this particular challenge, your goal was to try to maximize the total duration. So that's where this number uh, becomes important for us. All right, so that's how chains work. You can find more information if you go to uh, STK Help. If we, again, click on the chain properties and you click on Help at the bottom of the menu, it should pull up the uh, help information on this particular object and this particular set of menus. And it will also allow you to look at the various graphics options as well. So that's how chains work. They are very useful for solving communication issues in STK scenarios. OK, well, the second kind of object that we're going to look at today, which again is very useful, is called a constellation. It's going to give you a, a situation where this might be useful. So in our scenario, we see that the chain access intervals are fairly short. We can only get a small amount of simultaneous broadcast between the two locations. And of course, we can work very hard to optimize the orbit to try to make the chain access intervals as long as we possibly can. But if we're still not satisfied, then, well, we can introduce another sat uh, satellite. And the easiest thing to do is to introduce another satellite in the same orbit, but delayed by some amount of time. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to copy Peacock Sat 1 and then paste that copy of it. And we should get a Peacock Sat 2 appearing when we do that. There we go. I'm going to change the color of Peacock Sat 2 to a light blue just so that we can differentiate it. And I'm also going to change its properties by double clicking. There are a number of ways where you can make a sat one satellite trail along in the same orbit behind another one. Changing the orbit epochs might be one way of doing it, but a much simpler way is just to change the true anomaly, which was zero degrees for our initial satellite. So I'm going to make it 330 degrees. So there'll be 30 degrees separation in their circular orbits. I'm going to hit OK. There we go. Nothing has been calculated yet. So what we can do is uh, we can ask whether or not we're, we're accessing Peacock Sat 1 or Peacock Sat 2, what is the new communication chain? access interval where we can have live broadcasts from one uh, host to the other. 
So in order to do that, we're going to introduce a, introduce a constellation. So we'll go to insert new. I'm going to click on constellation and define properties. We're going to make our constellation out of these two satellites. And here the order is not important. All right, so we have the two satellites, Peacock Sat 1 and Peacock Sat 2. By the way, you could make constellations out of other objects as well. Aircraft, ground vehicles, particularly useful application of constellations is when you have an interplanetary mission that is sending things back, for instance, to the NASA Deep Space Network, which consists of multiple radio telescopes around the Earth. And so in order to get the data back from deep space as the Earth rotates, different ground stations will be able to receive the signal. And so you can use a constellation to represent the entire set of ground stations and calculate the access for uh, the whole assembly, the whole network of those ground stations. All right, so I'm going to hit apply for our constellation of two satellites. And again, it would be good practice to rename this constellation to something meaningful. And I'm going to call this uh, Peacock Constellation. Kind of makes sense. So let's see what we can do with this constellation object. We're done including things here. We are now going to calculate access between 30 Rock in New York, the constellation of either one or the other of Peacock Set 1 and Peacock Set 2, and the Tom Brokaw Studios in California. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new chain so that we can see if we've managed to increase our access time intervals. So I'm going to copy this chain just for uh, convenience and then paste it. And it should be called EW chain two, which is exactly what I want it to be called. And then we have to edit it. I'm also going to change the color a little bit as well, so we can see what's going on with this chain. So now instead of using just Peacock Sat 1, you might be tempted to add Peacock Sat 2, but that would not be correct. That would be a chain going from one satellite, uh, going from one location on the East Coast through Peacock Sat 1, then through Peacock Sat 2, and then down to Tom Brokaw Studios. But we're not doing satellite to satellite communications here. So what I'm going to do is remove the satellite and replace it with the constellation. There we go. And now I do have to reorder this list because the order is important to make sure that our communication chain goes from New York through the constellation to California. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to hit OK. And once again, you can see that nothing has happened. And so we're going to go to uh, chain access by right clicking on east west chain two, clicking compute accesses. Again, you can see nothing has happened here in the timeline. So we're going to have to manually add this new time component. So we go to EW chain two on the left. And I hope you remember how we do this. We go to the complete chain access intervals, which is the first item in the list that has a plus sign next to it. And if I hit OK, then the complete chain access interval should now appear in the timeline. And we've done the right thing. We've increased the time interval access in uh, now using two satellites instead of one. Let's see what that looks like in the simulation. So here we go. And I'm going to remove our first chain access. So Peacock Sat 1 is now completing the chain. But after a while, the chain will break for Peacock Sat 1. But that's OK, because we have Peacock Sat 2 taking over the communication link and extending our overall continuous live communication time. So that's how constellations can be useful as well. If we right click on Peacock Constellation, by the way, you'll see again, there is no access menu. The only way you can compute access to a constellation is by including it in a chain, which we have done here for EW chain two, and right clicking and computing the chain access. So that's my brief introduction to constellations and chains.
And again, you can go to the FTK help menu. You can open up these objects um, or insert a chain, insert a constellation, open up its properties, and you'll find that the help information is linked to the help button on the bottom. But I hope you found these concepts useful and that you will enjoy using them as you solve the challenges presented to you by the Stellar Explorers program.